In this lesson, I'll be talking about the mass and volumes of gases. And when we're looking at gases, there's a few things that you have to consider. The mass, the number of moles, and also the volume. So let's look at the molar mass of a gas. The molar mass, or any compound for that matter, can be calculated by adding up the masses of the individual atoms that make up this gas. So looking at an example, sulfur dioxide has the formula SO2. So there's one sulfur atom and two oxygen atoms. So therefore, its molar mass, if we add these up, will be 1 times 32, which is sulfur by itself, plus 2 times 16, which is 2 times oxygen. So what we find is that the molar mass is 64 grams per mole of sulfur dioxide. Now looking at moles, measurements commonly used when working with chemicals include Avogadro's number and moles. So firstly looking at Avogadro's number. This is a constant and you'll find that you'll get this number on data sheets if you have to do calculations. So just be aware of it, but you don't have to remember it. It's 6.0233 times 10 to the 23. And that's in molecules per mole, okay? So this is an incredibly large number, and we don't want to talk about molecules and elements in such large numbers because it gets very confusing. So that's why we use Avogadro's number to simplify the calculations that we have to do. So if there is Avogadro's number of a substance present, that amounts to one mole of the substance. So as you can see, moles and Avogadro's number are inherently linked. So what's a mole? It's the amount of a substance in grams that is numerically equivalent to the atomic mass or formula mass of that substance. Now, if a substance is an element, then a mole, one mole, will be the atomic mass of that element give it, given in grams. Okay, so that's what the numbers are on the periodic table. So, one mole of sulfur atoms is 32.06 grams. So that's how moles relate to mass. And the equation for moles is moles, which is written as N, equals the mass in grams over the molar mass. So moles, mass, and molar mass are all related. So, and also another example, one mole of oxygen is 16 grams. So note that oxygen exists in the form of molecules. So at room temperature, it's always uh, diatomic. So it has two molecules. So one mole, mole of oxygen molecules will be two times 16, which is 32 grams. A mole of sulfur dioxide will be 32.06 plus 16 plus 16 for the two oxygens, which is 64.06 grams. So now moving on to volumes. A mole of any gas has the same volume at, spe at specified conditions. The conditions are referred to as standard temperature and pressure, or STP, standard temperature and pressure. You'll probably see this quite a lot. So the two temperatures that we work with are zero degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius which is generally room temperature, or RT for short. And also 100 kilopascals, or KPA, which is very, very close to atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is 101.3 KPA, or one atmosphere. But for this, these purposes, we use 100 KPA. So now looking at moles and gases, one mole of a gas at zero degrees and 100 KPA occupies a volume of 22.71 litres. Now these are constants. And one mole of any gas at 25 degrees Celsius, so we've gone from zero to 25, we've got the same atmospheric pressure, or thereabouts, occupies a volume of 24.79 litres. So as you can see, at a higher temperature, the gas will occupy a greater volume, okay? So let's look at some examples so that we can uh, 
know how to work out moles to volume to mass to molar mass and we'll find that they're all interlinked. So what's, what is the volume of 10 grams of ammonia at 25 degrees and 100 kPa? So start by writing the formula for ammonia, it's NH3. The molar mass, we need to add up what's in NH3, one nitrogen, so 14, plus three hydrogens, three times 1.01 .01 is 17.04. So now let's use our equation. The number of moles, N, equals the mass, M, divided by the molar mass. So that's 10 divided by 17.04, and we get 0.59 moles. So now we know the moles of ammonia, we need to move on and find the volume. So we need a second equation now. And our second equation is volume V equals the number of moles, N, divided by the molar volume, V, M, which were those two numbers that I showed you earlier. So at a specific temperature, which we've been given as 25. So the volume is the moles, 0.59 times 24. I've written this wrong. It should be moles, my apologies, times the molar volume. Uh, so 0.59 times our constant, 24.79, and our answer is going to be 14.63 litres. So example two, what is the mass of 5 litres of hydrogen chloride at 0 degrees and 100 kPa? So we've changed our temperature now, so we'll have a different molar volume. So start with the formula, it's HCl or hydrochloric acid. The molar mass, if we add these two up, will be 36.46 grams per mole. Now let's look at the number of moles. Just get that out of the way. So the moles will be the volume present divided by the molar volume at a specific temperature, which is zero, which is five litres divided by our molar volume, 22.12, and we get 0.22 mole. So now we need to move on and find the mass here. Now, the mass equals the number of moles times the molar mass. So that's just a rearrangement of that equation. So we know that we've got 0.22 mole, and we times it by the molar mass, which we found earlier, 36.46, and we get 8.03 grams. So that's how we link these three equations for gases. So now I'll move on to a few questions. Question eight. The burning of sulfur can be described by the following equation. S, sulfur, solid, plus oxygen, gas, goes to SO2, gas. What volume of sulfur dioxide gas will be released at 25 degrees and 100 kPa when 8 grams of sulphur is burnt. So it wants us to find SO2, but it's only given us information on sulphur, which is on the other side of the equation. So we have to consider the molar ratio on the left and the right of this reaction. So going through it, the moles of sulphur, we can work out it's 8 divided by its molar mass which is 0.25 mole, so using this equation. And 0.25 moles of sulphur produces 0.25 moles of SO2. And we know this from the equation because we can see that it's a one to one to one ratio of the reactants and the products. So then the volume will be the moles times the molar volume at that temperature. Okay, so what we find is it's 6.12 litres. Question nine, what volume of gas would three moles of oxygen gas occupy at zero degrees? Now, the molar volume will be 22.71 at zero degrees and the volume of oxygen will be the moles times the molar volume, 
And what we find is that our answer will be 67.2 litres. Question 10. Magnesium reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid as shown by the following equation. Calculate the volume of gas produced at 25 degrees and 100 kilopascals when 5 grams of magnesium completely reacts. So off we go. One mole of magnesium will produce one mole of hydrogen gas. So this is similar to the last question. It's a one to one molar ratio. So magnesium has one and there's only one of the hydrogen gas. So it's a one to one. Now using our molar equation, the moles of magnesium will be the mass divided by 24.3, which is the molecular mass of magnesium. And we get 0 0.206 moles now, using our volume equation, V equals moles times molar volume, we get 0 0.206 times 24.79, which is our molar volume, at 25 degrees, and we get 5.1 litres. And question 11, the fuel used for the moon landing of Apollo 11 was a mixture of hydrazine, a chemical called hydrazine, and dinitrogen tetroxide. Now, this compound here is hydrazine, and this one here is dinitrogen tetraoxide. So, these liquids react spontaneously when mixed, as shown by the following equation. Okay, and they go on to produce nitrogen gas and water. What volume of gas would be released from one mole of hydrazine at 100 kilopascals and 25 degrees. So let's have a look. What we, what we find from this equation is that two moles of hydrazine, as you can see here from the two, produces seven moles of gas. So what we have to do with this particular equation is look at the moles of gas altogether on the right hand side. So we add three plus four, so we find that two moles goes to seven moles. Okay, so then if we break it down to simplify, one mole will produce 3.5 moles. So we just divide by two there. So at 100 kilopascals and 25 degrees, one mole of gas occupies, there's our molar volume, 24.79 litres. So therefore, for 3.5 moles, it will occupy 3.5 times 24.79 which equals 86.765 litres. So that wraps up the discussion about gases, their volume, their moles and their molecular mass.